Fish numero. Oh, oh my gosh. He almost killed me. I'm definitely saying mine's bigger. Bing bong. Bing bong. Well, what is going on, guys? I'm here with, you know, Tyler from Tyler's Real Fishing. 200 and how many subscribers? 253,000. That is crazy, man. It's, Quarter of a million people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Anyways, we're gonna go over five big tips that'll help you become a better angler, so stay tuned. It's gonna be a good one. Yes, it is. <laughs> This video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app. This is an app that you can download on your phone that helps you to find and catch bass a lot quicker. Once you get to the body of water that you are fishing, you can actually select that lake. Then you can input data like water temperature, water clarity, whether you're fishing around a vegetation or not, or if you are fishing in a windy or protected area. The app will then spit out some locations, some strategies, and some lures that you can use to start attacking the body of water you are fishing. There is a 100% free version and there is a paid version. And if this interests you, there's a link down below in the description and you can download it right now. The first big tip, something that I have really noticed anywhere across the nation is that it's not about what you throw, it's about where you go. And what I mean by that is in bass fishing, I think that a lot of guys spend just too much time in the bottom of their boat, you know, changing lures and colors and just messing around around with their tackle so much that if they would spend that same time just covering water, yeah. a lot of times they will find an active school of fish. Exactly. And I think that that's really, really important. Yeah, it, it, I think we give bass too much credit sometimes for being too smart. Because at the, at the end of the day, they're fish, and fish don't really have a whole lot of intelligence. Now, there are times in bodies of water with added fishing pressure, with different weather changes, where the fish are gonna do weird things that don't totally make sense, and so yes, you're gonna have to really get intricate with your drop shot leader, or with the spike it dip that you put on the end of your crawl. Like, you're gonna have to do those kind of things to catch fish, but I think 90% of the time, and that's a statistic I totally just made up, <laughs> but it's not about the lure that you're throwing. It's just, it, you gotta be in front of fish that are hungry and present. And I think a lot of times anglers just aren't, and that's where covering water, and oftentimes jumping from lake to lake, if you have lots of lakes in your area, uh, is the best way to find success on the water because uh, you gotta be around the biting fish. Yeah, and, and just a, a perfect point today, I mean, we were just kind of out here messing around and we could have fished this whole lake but we spent time looking at the graphs and finding a little pot of fish and then we ended up catching a few i caught a couple on a drop shot he lost a really big one on a hair jig and so again it's not necessarily the lure it's just that we were in that right area now tip number two has to do with this stuff in my hand right here and that is your tackle in order to become a truly better bass fisherman you have to understand that the, the tips that magazines and YouTubers and professional anglers tell you uh, is not just them trying to sell you product. When they tell you that this jig is best fished on this pound test line with this uh, power and action of rod and this kind of gear ratio, it's not that they're just trying to get you to buy product. It's that those types of, of, of tackle rod and reel is what leads them to be successful on the water. And so when me and Tyler give you guys tips, uh, don't just write them off as, oh, that's what he uses, but I can use something else. Give a try even if you like skipping docks on a seven foot six try a six foot nine like I do uh, if it doesn't end up working we'll do what works for you but I found that when you encounter uh, a piece of tackle advice that maybe you've never heard of before at least give it a try because you may discover something that can lead you to more efficient bass fishing or just catching more in general yeah, we get a ton of comments on the channel and everyone's asking us about equipment wise. So we always mention it in our videos yeah. and I never, like he said, wanna act like we're selling you something, but we're just trying to tell you, hey, this is what we've used and this is the reason why. You know, if, if he's skipping jigs under docks with 20 pound tests, it's because he's probably tried 17 and 15 and broken off. I and so <laughs> that that's why we say to go with a certain pound test. And the big thing about tackle, it can be that one fish that makes, I mean, it could be a lifetime catch. Yep. You know, you caught a 14 pounder this year. I did, that's you, wild. <laughs> and if you didn't have the proper gear for that one fish, yep. can you imagine losing a 14 pounder at the well, boat? Well, let me let me ex explain what happened during that catch. So I was throwing an Alabama rig and a 14 pounder fights really hard, <laughs> like really hard. And there were several times during that fight where I probably could 
could have lost that fish if the gear wasn't right. I'm throwing 25 pound fluorocarbon line. That's about the heaviest you can go in terms of castable fluorocarbon. Then I've got heavy action swim bait jig heads. I knew that I was going for just 10 pounders on this trip and so I wanted to get my tackle on point and in case I hooked up with the fish of a lifetime, which I ended up hooking up with, I want to have the right tackle for it and so if I had any lighter jig heads, some of the runs that fish took me on might have, might have pulled out of his mouth. And then I wanted to have, of course, the right rod to get the casting distance because I saw the fish on live scope 120 feet from my boat and a rod that's not eight foot, seven, seven, six to eight and a half feet, you're not gonna have the casting distance power to get to those fish out there. And so all of that together led me to have a successful day and I caught a 14 and a half pounder. God, <laughs> I mean, so that's, that's a perfect example why your tackle must be on point. I don't know how big this is. I don't know how big this fish is. All right, the third major tip is that there is no replacement for time on the water. There are a ton of guys that might spend a lot of time watching YouTube, you know, and I've been in that boat before. I, I, we, we get in those times where we just mm -hmm. spend time watching YouTube or, or reading articles, but literally going out and experiencing fishing, going out there and catching fish, that is the best way and quickest way yeah. to learn. Cause you pick up on so many things that the bass tell you that an article or even us at times can, you know, because it's so situational. Yeah. At, at, at every time you go fishing. Like I always love to try to learn something every time that we go fishing. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think that just being out on the water, yes, you, you could spend, you know, if you're watching this on a Saturday morning, you could sit here for the next couple hours and, yeah. and watch YouTube, or you could go out and experience something. And I think that that's truly the best way to learn. I don't think there's really a replacement. For no, it. and I think one thing that is really constant with a bunch of different lakes is that your specific lake might not be exactly the same as the tip article or video you just watched, but you can apply something from that to your body of water. And the only way to know if the tip you read about is a slightly different than the one that works on your body of water is to actually go on your body of water and test it out for yourself. So that should come as a given. You got to spend time on the water. The best anglers ever that I am around, uh, Jordan Lee, Alton Jones Jr., Alton Jones. Well, Alton Jones doesn't fish as much as he used to, but he's been fishing for like 65 years. So <laughs> he's had time on the water, but all these guys fish a ton and that's why they're at the top of their game. And tip number four when it comes to becoming a better angler, in my experience, this one cannot be replaced, and it is to find a mentor. Find somebody who is better at bass fishing than you are, go fishing with them, learn all you can, soak the information in, because I guarantee you will be a better angler. One of the only reasons why I have so much detail in my videos is because I travel on the Bass Pro Tour filming freelance video of the best pros on the planet. And so I get to ask them questions. And people like Alton Jones and Alton Jones Jr. are my mentors in the fishing space and in life. And I get to be like, hey, I'm thinking about making a video on this. I'm thinking about throwing this lure. What should I do? And the immediate knowledge that I understand not everybody has access to, but some kind of mentor that you can have uh, in, in your your fishing circles in your town, just try to get to know somebody who's better at fishing than you are because you will soak in information a lot faster than you think. Yeah, and, and a good thing too is just even, even a person who may be better at a certain technique. You know, maybe it's your buddy who's just a lot better with a spinning rod. Yeah, or, you know, true. for me, I, I know a guy who's just really good at flipping grass back home. So I love getting in his boat and just figuring out and understanding his mind on how he goes about flipping grass in these vast situations. I think it really helps me to become better just by getting in the boat with him. Obviously, you yeah. can watch on, on YouTube or read articles, but getting in the boat with someone, a mentor, a yeah. friend, and just learning is really going to help you catch a lot more bass. Exactly, and I think kind of piggybacking off of that, if you get the chance to be a co-angler in any kind of tournament level, whether it's BFLs or Opens or whatever, uh, I would say do it because the stuff that you're going to learn from your pro in the front of the boat is going to be completely invaluable and oftentimes would take you a lot longer to learn on your own. Helicopter going over us. Helicopter, <laughs> tubes, seriously. Gotta love it. There's probably a storm coming. 
double rainbows. Yeah. The fifth and final tip that can really change the way that you fish is really defining what success is to you when you're out there on the water. Mm -hmm. I think that success comes in many different ways. You know, obviously we all want to go out there and catch fish and you might see that success is going out there and catching 10 fish a day or 15 fish or 50 fish depending on where you live but success good luck finding success <laughs> if you want 50 fish yeah. but but success can also be that you went out and just caught one fish but it was on a lure that you never caught a bass on you yeah. you're you're out there trying to learn something and and you just caught that one fish and that can be a very successful day I know for me personally this year I was really wanting to start learning a glide bait a little bit better and so I just stuck it in my hand and I went out there and I didn't get a lot of bites and even one day I didn't even catch a fish but I learned so much about that bait yeah. and how it works and just how to fish it and start catching bass on it and I defined that as success exactly and I think speaking from the creator you know mindset success to us is having like a successful video shoot that we catch enough fish to prove the point that we're talking about on camera and so if I don't catch any fish that's totally fine I have great time on the water but if my goal is to film a video and then I don't get the sit down portion I don't I don't catch any fish to, to prove it that's not a successful day to me and so again that might not apply to you guys because you're not, probably not filming videos but you really have to define what success is and my most successful days are just days that I spend with my wife on the water and she catches fish and I catch fish it could be just one fish a piece but as long as we have a good time on the water that is success to me as well if you guys enjoyed this video Tyler did a video called three things that every fisherman should know and it's kind of in the same vein and I think that you guys will really enjoy this video if you like this one so please comment below subscribe to my channel go to this guy's channel and subscribe to it heck yeah and I guess we will probably see you over there are you gonna put it on the screen somewhere yeah okay cool it's probably right over your face that's fine that's perfect I like that